Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for our second session as part of the AI Chat App Hack. We have a special guest today talking about Cosmos DB connection and uh, he'll introduce himself very soon. Uh, if you watched the earlier session where we kickstarted the chat app hack and you know talked about getting this all all start, uh, all started up, I did post the slides from that and I also posted a video where I showed deploying the app from an Azure free account. So check the discussion forum to get all that. And once again, any questions you have that don't get answered to our live streams, please put them in the discussion forum. We are all monitoring that forum to see what questions and ideas you all have. Uh, so let's go over. Thanks, Pamela. All right. Hello, folks. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can connect your chat application to Azure Cosmos DB. My name is Kaelin Modi, and I'm a product manager on the Azure Cosmos DB. Also, one thing I want to point out, I'm not related to the Prime Minister of India. So if you have any questions about that, uh, just, just letting you guys know. So I'm going to briefly talk about what is Cosmos DB and why Cosmos DB, go over a few concepts and introduce a new, a new member of the Cosmos DB family, which is the Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. have a couple of demos for you. One of them is going to be a low-code solution where you can build your rack pattern using just the database and Azure AI OpenAI Studio. Then I also have a Jupyter Notebook where, where we will talk about the R in RAG, the retrieval part. I have some, some links for you, and we can have, have question and answers at the end. So everything changed over a year ago, over a year and a half ago, when like OpenAI released ChatGPT. And this has probably changed the entire industry in like pretty much record time. People are now realizing what they can do with their data, which they never realized before that modern applications and intelligent workloads have like unique requirements. Data is coming in from like highly variable, like highly variable places. Like it's, it's in the form of like images, streaming videos, audios, like documents, and like from your Apple watches and so on. It also has like unpredictable traffic and users are distributed all over the world. And they want to expect, they expect like fast, always on like digital experiences. So this sounds like we might need multiple services, right? To like store our vectors and organize the data and all that stuff to build AI applications. Actually, no. This is where like Azure databases come into play. Users can now store their operational slash transactional data and their vector data together all in one database. So you're gonna save on cost and complexity. For example, if you're using like a third party, like single purpose database, such as like Pinecone or something else, you'll have to like ETL out of the transactional data stores and put it into your database and surface that for like vector queries and rack patterns and then bring the data back. However, this has some limitations, especially if your data is highly volatile, like third party like databases like Pinecone aren't best suited for such rapidly changing information because there's always a lag in updating and querying the data. This delay means that the data you are analyzing is already outdated by the time it's ready to use. Therefore, going with the first party services is gonna cost, is gonna give you a better experience with real time AI, which is gonna be quite straightforward and potentially gonna cost you less and have the best integrations with other Azure services. Uh, one thing I wanna point out is that we, all, we are also the only database at Microsoft that provides like built-in AI functionalities, including like vector search, uh, capabilities in our vCore services. And this vector capabilities allows like developers to help query the data to implement rack type applications. So Cosmos DB from the ground up was built for intelligent applications. Even before AI existed, Cosmos DB is built for semi-structured data. It's the type of the data that AI applications want to re reason on. And Cosmos is uniquely capable of workloads that you can't put in front of other databases. Over a couple of years ago, ChatGPT was released. And as we all know, it's the fastest growing consumer app in history. It went from zero to 100 million daily active users in like two months. During this time, they migrated to Cosmos DB for the chat application, and they have it ever since. The service experienced no downtime. It speaks to the fact that how Cosmos DB handle such volume and growth without any issues. 
Therefore, it is built to be the best database to build such kinds of applications for its ability to scale and maintain that availability. So now let's dig into a few concepts. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is RAG. I know this hackathon is all about building RAG applications. So I'll briefly discuss what RAG means, retrieval augmented generation. Then I'm gonna talk about one of the methods you could do to RAG, which is vector search using vector embeddings. And finally, I'm gonna talk about vector indexes, which is how you search for data in your database. Um, the two vector indexes that we support today are IVF and HNSW. So let's dig into retrieval augmented generation or RAG in short form. It is basically how it is, it is a way to intelligently retrieve the right data from your data set to provide context to your LLM. So it knows how to answer a question. Like models like GPT 3.5 and 4, they are huge and wonderful tools. They have like built-in knowledge from the data that they were trained on, but they don't know about your specific scenarios or they might they might not know what your specific use case is. For example, if you are an e-retailer, right, and you're trying to sell products online, they might the LLMs might not have context of what products you have in your inventory and what is available to your customers based on the description data um, or whatever, whatever else they're looking for. So you wanna bring that data to your LLMs so that you can answer questions in a more efficient and effective and accurate way for a use case. In simple terms, you're basically giving, giving a better personalized answer to your users with RAG by storing the chat history of the, of the way you interacted before. To perform RAG, there are multiple ways of doing it. One method that is very popular and accurate these days is by using vector embeddings and therefore performing vector search. So vector embedding is a compact, semantically rich representation of your data. And the idea is to, uh, it can be any kind of data, like a data describing a product, or you can, or like it's the price or the SKU of the product. You can create like an embeddings using an API service or a model then you create a vector representation of your data, and this allows you to search for other embeddings or products that are semantically similar. The semantic part is determined by the model that creates the embeddings, and the similarity part is measured by the distance function like the cosine similarity. So traditionally, like looking back like five, 10 years ago, it was really boring and like laborious to create your vector embeddings um, for your AI models. But now with, with OpenAI and Hugging Face, we are, you, are, you are easily able to create your vector embeddings with these APIs. And we have easy integrations with OpenAI APIs and Hugging Face on how you can create vector embeddings for your data and store it right in the database. There's but also, with the use of vector embeddings, you, we have other specific use cases. For example, we have like detecting anomalies. Like for example, if you have like an IoT sensor and you are worried that your anomalous readings in the data are not accurate. So you can create a vector representation of your sensor data and look for anomalies or vectors of your sensor data that are far removed from the cluster and the, and, and the areas of data that you would expect. And other thing that relies on is like even Bing relies on like vector embeddings of their images and related sort of data when you do like vector, uh, when you search for like image searches or like multimedia searches. So that's when like vector embeddings are also very useful and like vector search is really useful for. Now, you, in order to do a vector search, you need to have vector indexes properly because you don't want to go through your database and like search through everything for the answer that you're looking for. This is going to be really expensive, and you're going to be using a lot, lot of tokens, uh, which, 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 not, which not, which is not something you're looking for. So there are two indexes that are being supported by Azure Cosmos DB today. The first one is the IVF, the Inverted File Index. Um, we can think of this as a sort of like doing cluster and like cluster analysis, like finding the nearest neighbor against the clusters. And um, it's basically like you are distributing your data sets, like the semantically meaning of data in like different clusters. And you basically go to the cluster that has this, the semantically similar meaning from your question and you search through there and get the answer that you're looking for. 
These are pretty fast for building vector indexes and they are very memory efficient as well. However, it requires a clustering step before the indexing, which can be a bit slow and then tune and which also requires like different tuning parameters uh, when building these applications. But it is a pretty good if you have like relatively small scale or you're just starting out with your rack pattern application. And I feel like it, you should be looking into IVF if you're building something for your hackathon today or if you're building a POC, um, IVF should be the way to go. Additionally, we also have HNSW, which is a hierarchical nav navigable small world, and it's a long word. Uh, it is built, it, it's built on like a multi-layer graph with like short and long connections between the vectors. And so HNSW tends to be more robust and, and has like high performance in terms of like queries per second or like vector search per second. And it's like being, it's also, also it's, a, it's quite accurate when it comes to a large data set, like data set we're talking about like trillions, like trillions of data. And it is relatively more robust when it compares to, compares to IVF. So if you are doing a lot of like insertion and deletion, it tends to be take, taking a lot more, uh, it tends to be a bit more at keeping it robust, at keeping the structure of the graph. And so your results and like maintain consistent accuracy or relatively consistent accuracy over time. So it supports like many insertion and deletions um, throughout, but there is straight off to it. It's that they are, they are memory, they use a lot of memory when they come to, when it comes to like building these indexes. So if you have a memory constraint application, um, HNSW might not be the way to go for. But we have done a lot of internal testing on HNSW and IVF. I can say that we are able to support like we can support scales of millions and millions of vectors with very efficient like search accuracy and performance. So we went over the concept very briefly, but how do we get started with all, all these things? This is where Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore comes into play. For those of you who don't know, uh, Cosmos DB, uh, uh, Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore is a fully managed MongoDB compatible database service for building modern applications. With Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore, developers can enjoy the benefits of native Azure integration, have lo low total cost of ownership, and have the familiar architecture when migrating or even building new applications. We also have the free tier, which 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 with which you get around 32, 32 gigs of storage, which is 64 times more than you will get anywhere else. And you can you can get started today without the need of a credit card. We also have like burstable SKUs and like different cluster tiers and all that stuff. And it is also AI ready. We have native vector search, including HNSW, right built into the engine. We have the vector indexing the uh, right built in the engine engine so that you don't have to pay extra or move your data around. Therefore, your data, your embeddings, your vectors and vector indexing are, are all together in the database so that you can perform your right pattern applications effectively. We also have plugins for like Langchain, Semantic Kernel and Lama Index. And we also have easy integration with Azure OpenAI Studio, which I'll be using to deploy a low code, low code RAG application. All you have to do is visit aka.ms slash try vcore. Also, one thing I wanna point out is like KPMG uh, in early in like 2023, KPMG Australia deployed its first version of ChemChat, which is an AI agent to streamline KPMG employee operational tasks, such as research and drafting proposal, documents and communications. Two months later, they added Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore to the solution and their results went up significantly. The search quality jumped from 50% to 90, 91% as measured by the prompt co conference index and, our, and the results were being delivered in under a second. So they were able to increase the performance and were able to scale it across all KPMG member firms. So, that's a lot of like talking about vCore. Let's get into the system architecture of how all these things work. So for example, we have your Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore cluster right here, where you can so store your data and vectors. So if you have a regular data, what you wanna do is send your data to a vectorized function, which calls the Azure OpenAI service, and it requests the embeddings to the Azure OpenAI service, and then sends it back to the vectorized function, 
and stores them as vectors in our Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB v core. Additionally, we have the front end of the app, where basically where you talk to the application, the app service web UI. So the user asks a question to our app service web UI and is gonna go to that Azure Open AI and again, convert the question into embeddings and then later go into a database and look for the answer that match that is semantically similar to the question that was answered that, that that was being asked by the user and once it finds the answer it's going to give once it finds finds the solution like the semantically similar text it's going to send that back to the azure web service ui and it's going to show the answer to the user at the same time it's going to save the prompt and the completion the question and the answer into the database to provide a better um, answer in the future. This is where RAG, well, this is what RAG basically tells you to have a better prompts and completions for your application. So now let's take a look at a real world example of Azure Cosmos CV for MongoDB vCore and Azure OpenAI service. So we have our GitHub repo, um, uh, which I'll drop the link to it in the chat. Um, where you can take a look at all the readme files and it gives you the explanation of what RAG is. Also, it goes over um, the chat application. Um, okay. And we also have the deployment button. Um, so with this application, uh, the sample chat app that I'll, I'll be building today, all you need to do is click on deploy to Azure and it's going to help you deploy the application for you. You don't need to write any, not, you don't need to write a single line of code when deploying this. All you have to do is click on deploy to Azure and it's going to take the care of, it's going to take care of it, everything for you. Once it is deployed, it's going to look something like this. It's going to bring you to an Azure OpenAI service resource group where you're going to have your resource group, your status, and the location, the subscription. Once you're on this page, you will you want to go to Azure OpenAI Studio and click on Bring Your Own Data. I know this is in preview, but this is, works completely fine. All you have to do is try it now and collect, connect to your Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. For the sake of this presentation, I've already implement, I've already stored my data in my Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. Let's take a look at it. So we have our connection string for this. We hit connect. And as you can see, we have our retail DP um, collection uh, database with multiple collections. We have the completion collection, we have the customer collection, we have products and sales order. In the pro we'll be using the product because I want to build a chat app that recommends bike accessories based on what the user is looking for. So in our collection, you can see we have the regular data, which is the name of the bike, uh, the SKU, the description, as well as the price. One thing I wanna point out is we also have stored the vectors right in the database. For the sake of this presentation, I've already vectorized all my data and stored it um, right in my database. Our repo like talks talks you through of how you can like how the whole process work, and also if you want to visualize the way your data is being vectorized, it's right in the repo as well, which I'll be, I'll be talking about in a few minutes. But as you can see, we have a vector embeddings right in the database along with our um, regular data. One thing also I want to point out is we also have the vector search index right built into a database, which is called Vector. For this, I'll be using the IVF vector search, but you can obviously use HNSW um, if you like to. So we have our database. We have all our uh, data right in the database. Now let's go back to our Azure OpenAI Studio to build our collection. So I'm gonna select my data source as Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore, and I'm gonna select my Mongo Central database account and enter my password right here. Hit next. Select the database, which is going to be retail DB, because I want to create, as I said, I want to create like a chat app for my um, shoe, uh, for my bike accessory store. I'm going to select the collection as products, and the index that I want to use is the vector search index. And the embeddings model I'll be using is the Azure OpenAI ADA 002 
to create those embeddings when I ask it a question and hit next. The content data that I would like the index to, to be vectorized for, like to be looked for is going to be the category name, the name of the bike, the price of the bike, the SKU and the description of the bike. When I ask it a question, I basically want my chat app to go through them and like find me the answer relevant based on these columns. And the vector field is going to be vector, which basically stores our vector embeddings. And I'm going to hit next and save and close. As you can see, we have our very generic chat application. I can ask him a question right here, like, hi, what is your name? And as you can see, I give a very generic answer. Hi, I'm an AI assistant trained by OpenAI and hosted by the Azure OpenAI service. But this is not something very personal to your, for example, if you're building your own startup, if you have your own application, this is not very personalized to what you're looking for. So in order to make it like even more personalized, I'm going to give my chat application or my chatbot a personality. I'm going to go to my prompt section. And I'm, as you can see, we have the system message right here. I'm going to give him a personality by saying, hey, your name is Wheelie, and you are an AI assistant for the Cosmic Works bike store. You help people find production, inf production information for bikes and accessories. And your demeanor is going to be friendly, and it's going to be playful with lots of energy. So I'm going to go and hit Save, Apply Changes. And I want to go to my advanced settings and limit the strictness to 1 and have it recommend me only three documents per, per my question. All right. Now let's ask him a question and maybe reduce the parameter that the maximum response to like 500 words. All right. Now let's ask him a question again. Hi, what is your name? As you can see, our chat app just said, hi, my name is Wheelie, and I'm here to assist you with any bike-related queries that you might have. Let's roll. All right, that sounds pretty cool. So let's ask him, what bikes do you have? As you can see, our Wheelie, a chat, a chat, chat bot, basically went to do a database and looked for bikes that in his database and was able to give me, recommend me three bikes uh, with citations as well. I can also look at the citations to see that, yeah, this, this is where he got the data from. So I can like always cross verify with the data that is pro pro projecting. One cool thing that I wanna point out with Azure OpenAI Studio is if you click on playground settings, you can enable speech to text. So I wanna talk to my chat app. I wanna talk to Wheelie and I want Wheelie to, to talk back to me. So I'm going to select the speech resource, which is going to be Canada Central, and acknowledge this. Enable speech to text and enable text to speech. Additionally, I'm going to give it a voice. I'm going to give him a voice of Brian and hit save. All right, let's do this. Hi, I live in Seattle, where the weather is quite rainy and it has hilly terrains. What bikes would you recommend me? Now press enter and see what response Wheelie is going to give. Hello there. Given the hilly terrains and rainy weather in Seattle, I'd recommend a bike that offers good control, stability, and durability. One, the Turing 1000 Yellow 54 could be a great choice. Turing bikes are designed for long distances and can handle a variety of terrains. They also have wider tires for better stability and comfort, which would be beneficial in rainy conditions. This bike is priced at $2385 Doc 1. 2. The Road 750 Black 48 is another good option. Road bikes are lightweight and efficient, making them ideal for hilly areas. They have thinner tires and smaller treads, which offer less rolling resistance and more speed. However, they might be a bit slippery in the rain, so you'll need to be cautious. This bike is I hope everyone's been able to hear Wheelie and how he was able to recommend me uh, bikes based on hilly terrains and rainy weather in Seattle. We can ask him even more, like ask him like even more specific questions. Um, like, okay, let's um, 
let's see my escape manager is watching this presentation right now. And if he likes my presentation, there's a chance that I might get a raise after this. So if I get a raise, I want to treat myself because I'm, I've been working on this presentation for a while. What would you recommend me to buy? Oops. So again, um, really went again into the database and recommend me the bike, which is the most expensive one, which is the 2380, uh, two of the most expensive bikes, which is the $2385 worth and then $2,444 worth. So yeah, again, so our really chatbot was able to go understand the question that was asking, like, hi, I might get a raise. And it was able to understand it and then go into the database and recommend me the bikes based on what it is looking for. So one other thing I want to show is in the Azure OpenAI Studio, you can always like deploy this and share it with your with your users by just clicking on a new deploy to a new web app application. All you have to do is enter the name of the app. Uh, let's say Wheelie. You have to select a subscription and I'll use Cosmos V demos. And I'll select my resource. I'll select the location as Canada Central. And the good thing is you also have the free tier available. We have the free um, pricing plan. So you can deploy this application without being worried about being paid, uh, without being charged or anything. Just click on play, hit free and enable chat history in web application. This is a very crucial step. You want to enable chat history in your web app in order to provide a better experience to your users who are using your chat applications when asking questions or looking for answers uh, based on the product or what are you what are you building and acknowledge all this and hit deploy. For the sake of the presentation, again, I won't be present, I will be showing, I won't be hitting deploy right now because it takes around like 10 minutes to hit deploy. So I'll show what it what the final product looks like. So it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna have a very generic um, Azure AI web page. It's gonna have the Azure logo and has like chat, start chatting and this, so again, the same thing. If you, if I ask him a question, how what is your name? Is gonna give me the answer. Hi, my name is. I, I'm I'm, my, I'm AI assistant trained to help you with your bike needs. Again, this is not something very personalized. It's not something that you would like to share with your users or like people you want to work with. So, I went ahead and created even personalized my web app um, by giving really a photo. So really is not related to Clippy that Microsoft released a few years ago. They're not dependent, but maybe a, maybe a cousin, a distant cousin. Uh, so yeah, I use Dolly to generate this image for Wheelie, and I gave my gave my website a more a better personality. As you can see, I use the Cosmos DB logo on the top left. I change the title to the Cosmic Works Bike Store. I say hi, my name is Wheelie, and I I give a brief description on the web page as well, so people know what to expect from Wheelie. So if I if I ask him a question again, hi, what is your name? It's gonna go ahead, again, give me the same answer that it gave me in the Azure OpenAI Studio, that my name is Willy and I'm, I'm here to help you with bike related queries. One thing when you can see, we also have the chat history right here. So you can it stores all your chat histories and your answers that were, you asked earlier into our Cosmos DB, which uh, Cosmos DB uh, account. So it is gonna give you a better, it's gonna help you give a better response in the future. Secondly, we also have the share button where you basically can copy the URL and then send it to people to try out and play with your web app. So yeah, this is a simple uh, scenario of how you can build a chat app without writing or without without writing a lot of code or like a low code solution usually using Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore and Azure OpenAI service. Now, I want to go into the next phase where I want to show how the R of RAG can be done with Python or a Jupyter Notebook using Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore. So again, I have my Jupyter Notebook right here. Again, the links for the links are going to be in the chat uh, in the description or they're going to come up at the end of the presentation. Um, so we have a Jupyter Notebook right here um, where 
we will be performing a vector search similarity on based on the shoes that are in our inventory. So uh, I want to install all the preliminary packages that are required to run this application. Oh, sorry, I was showing the wrong screen. Yeah, so we have the Azure OpenAI Studio. Um, again, uh, we are using the Azure OpenAI to create our embeddings and completion completions uh, APIs. Uh, we're going to deploy a completion and embeddings model. Uh, we can learn more about it by going through this URL uh, for completions and embeddings. And you can also create an Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore resource by clicking on this link or going to aka.ms slash try vCore. So again, I'm going to install all the packages that I'll be needing for my demo. It's going to take like five seconds, uh, five to 10 seconds to get it done. Um, the next thing is I'm going, to, I'm going to configure everything from my example.env file. So where I have the OpenAI API key, uh, the type, um, and my connect uh, and the endpoint that I'll be using for uh, my embeddings. I hit run. That was easy. And I'm going to create embeddings um, using the ADA, the uh, Azure OpenAI embeddings model. So as you can see, it was able to create an embedding for the prompt, like shoes for San Francisco summer. And it was able to print the embeddings of how it looks like uh, with the, the vector representation of the prompt that I just entered uh, into my function. Now let's connect to our Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore account. Um, just all you need is go to, once you create one, so, all you have to do is, I have a blog ready as well. So if you want to take a look at the blog, feel free to do it. But once you go to the aka.ms slash try vcore, um, you can, you will be pointed to this page where you can create an Azure Cosmos DB account cluster by using the portal. All you have to do is create an account for free. And then you'll be landed on this page where you go on create on the Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vcore and we and cl click on vcore cluster. If I hit create, Use the subscription and the resource resource group that you're looking for. I'll be again using my resource group for this present for this and give it a name and enable free tier, which again, it's completely free. You don't even have to pay. You don't even have to enter your credit card or anything. You just enable free tier. Click on the checkbox. Select the region and the Mongo version that you're looking for. Enter your admin username and password go to the next step and add your current IP address. In order to do, the reason we want to do this is we don't want to have everyone access to your vCore cluster. So you just want to have it like restricted. So therefore, just add your current IP address uh, and hit review and save. It's going to create the cluster for you. It's going to take around like seven to 10 minutes to create the cluster. And once it is ready, it's going to look something like this. It's going to, again, list you the cluster tier and the short key and all the required stuff. And all you need from this is go to the connection string blade, copy the connection string from here, and then put it in the Jupyter notebook. All you have to enter is your username and your password that you use when you are creating your vCore cluster. So now let's go back to our Jupyter notebook. So I already have my connection string set up um, in my example.env file. So you want to hit run and set up the connection. All right. Now I'm going to create a database, name it AdGen database, and I'm going to have a collection in that database called AdGen collection. I'm going to create that. Okay, a collection was created, and I'm also going to create the vector index. Remember, we have two different vector indexes uh, supported by Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore today. The first one is the IVF, uh, which is the default vector indexing algorithm, which works for all cluster tier. And then we have the HNSW uh, index algorithm as well. For the sake of the presentation, I'll be using the IVF. You are free, free to choose any one of them, uh, but I'll be using the IVF today. So our vector index was created. Now let's go and upload our data to the collection. 
So I have, I have all my data so stored in the shoe with vector.json file. So I'm going to hit run. And it's going to import around, like, it's going to add around 300, uh, 300 uh, data entries to my collection. And now I'm going to do create, like, perform, like, a vector. I'm going to define a vector search function to assist with, like, uh, to assist with my future queries that I'll be asking to my chatbot, uh, to my uh, application. All right. Now, now let's perform uh, a vector search for a question like shoes for Seattle weather. Let's hit run. And as you can see, it, it was able to go into the database uh, where we have all our data stored um, for all the shoes in a database and recommend me shoes for Seattle's sweat, sweater weather. One thing I want to point out is we also have the purchase link URL. So you can basically just make the, have like a front end for this and ha have this like a good web UI application where people and go and take a look at it in a much better way. So, but I want to point, point out the similarity score. So when I asked for shoes for Seattle's weather, it was able to go through the database and first recommend me like winter rain boots because it knows like Seattle weather is like quite rainy and like it needs like you need like boots for it. Um, and sweat, sweater again relates to winter. So the first thing it recommended was the nature breeze, rainforest women's like stylish buckle strap, winter rain, boots, shoes, um, with a price of like 57.90 and all that stuff. And give us a similarity score of like 83%. Similarly, we have something else. We have the Columbia women's Redmond midwater hiking shoes, which has a similarity score of 0 0.82. And then, then we have the third one as this one, like the fashion boots. So it was, I restricted right now the answers just to three, but you can obviously ask for more recommendations uh, by going to the database and just connecting through it. So let's try something else. Let's try, let's go to Florida and like recommend me something for like hot uh, Florida weather. And let's run that. As you can take it like 0.7 seconds to recommend, oh. Um, all right. Um, for some reason, uh, um, okay. Okay. Um, for some reason, I don't know. There's something, I don't know. The demos, like sometimes they don't work when you're presenting, but as you can see, the second, the similarities, the second recommendation from our, uh, from the Jupyter notebook is the fabric sandal, which has a similarity score of 0.83%. And then we have the low loafer shoes, which has a similarity score of 82%. And it was able to recommend me based on the question I asked uh, was the looking for like shoes for like Florida's hot weather or something like that. So this is how the retrieval part, the R in retrieval of uh, in drag works using Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB v Core. You can obviously just take a look at this uh, Jupyter Notebook, which I'll be linking again at the end of this video or in the description, and try to build um, your uh, your hackathon projects or applications using this. So now let's go back to our slides. One thing I want to point out is again that we you can we have Azure OpenAI AI Search and we have Azure Cosmos DB for to perform retrieval and RAG, but they have like two different, they, they are being used in two different scenarios. For example, Azure Cosmos DB is a database. AI search is not a database. So with Azure Cosmos DB, you're basically searching through your database, like one set of like collection. But with AI search, you get to search through like multiple uh, data, data points. Like for example, you can like search through like SharePoint, Data Lake, like blob storages, and even like other databases too. Um, when to use AI search is uh, it offers like more relevant results like wire ranking and like hybrid sources. And it has like more premium like capabilities and like AI search is ideal when like data is across like distributed across like multiple databases. Where, whereas Cosmos DB is really uh, useful when your data is stored in just in one place. So if you don't want to move your data around like outside your operational database, then Cosmos DB is the way for you to go. Again, you can do a retrieval using both Azure AI Search and Azure Cosmos DB. It really depends on what you're looking for and how 
you're trying to build your application or the use case for it is. So I want to end this presentation by sharing something uh, for you guys. You can always, you can get up to like 6,000 worth of Azure Cosmos CV for free for 90 days by just going to the link aka.ms slash try Azure AI Advantage blog. So again, you have the free tier where you don't need any, you don't need a, you, you don't need your credit card to get started with Azure Cosmos CV from already V core. And also on top of that, they're giving you up to six thousand dollars worth of Cosmos DB for free. So I hope you use these two to these, these, these things to build applications using Azure Cosmos DB for your hackathon. And here are all the links that I use from my presentation. Um, we have the link for the free tier that is aka.ms slash try vcore. And then the wheelie demo can be a link can be found at aka.ms slash mongo vcore Azure AI sample. The AI advertisement that I showed is on the is like a it's like it's like a use case that I built um, to demo. You can also take a look at that. It's just the aka.ms slash adgen and the Jupyter notebook that I is demoed in the second part of my demo is at aka.ms slash rag with Cosmos DB. Finally, the AI advantage blog, you can read about it at aka.ms slash Azure AI Advantage blog. All right, thank you. Now if you have any questions, feel free to put in the chat and I'll answer most of them. I'll try to answer as much as I can. Right. I think someone asked a question, Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB v Core and Azure Cos Cosmos DB for Postgres services are the two that support vector indexes to be specific. So, can I use Azure Database for Postgres with this? Yeah, you can. You can all. Yeah, even Postgres supports IVF and HNSW indexes. You can definitely use like, Postgres um, for your application. Oh yeah, so someone had a question. Wanted to know if the data is changing and not as often in real time, but distributed across like SharePoints, like KB Management Tool. I would really recommend looking into Azure AI services because if you have like distributed across like multiple services, then AI search is for you. But if it's under one place, then I would recommend looking at Azure Cosmos DB. Going through the chat right now to see if I missed any of the questions. Um, can you talk about ingesting Cosmos DB into AI search? Um, unfortunately, I don't have any like resources right now that I could like share uh, that that would help you like ingest like Cosmos DB into AI search. Um, but I'll definitely look into it and try to add it at the end of this presentation or in the chat or in the description. What are the tools would you use to get data into Cosmos in the right format? Um, you can obviously use a migration tools. Um, if you again go to the uh, to the website, we also have a like a detailed link of how you can get started um, of how you can like migrate your data into Cosmos DB. Let me pull up that link so people can take a look at it too. So we have this play, play page um, where what are the options to migrate data from MongoDB 
to Azure Cosmos DB from MongoDB V Core. It basically talks you through of how you can like you can you can do like offline migration as well as like online migration to get your data ingested into Azure Cosmos DB from MongoDB V Core. I hope this helps. Yeah, with distributed data sources and injections coming from like various sites, uh, do, uh, I would recommend again looking into AI search um, uh, versus like Cosmos DBs. Again, is is where you want to have all your data together in one place and just take into it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So what more specifically? What tools would you use to create the vectors that were added to the records in the DB? Um, yeah, so let me pull up this repo. Uh, in order to like help you get started with initial data load. Um, again, it's again in the repo, but if you look at this, uh, you can open a browser so you can watch like the Azure functions take over and like process the data, but not by looking like how it basically works. All you have to do to start the data load and like vector generation is open a browser and like enter your application name that you use when, gen when creating your resource. When you click on hit to deploy, like deploy to Azure, you, you would get a name for your resource. All you want to do is embed the following dash functions dot vectorize uh, uh, dot azure websites dot net api ingestion vectorize so it's going to help you visualize how your data is being vectorized and stored in the data so that's a very good step um, to take a, to help you visualize your data and take a look of how the data is being ingested into cosmos db uh, this is again in the in the link in the readme file if you scroll down you'll be able to find it with all the steps on what you have to do to to, uh, to take care of it I hope that was helpful. Uh, is AI search vector based uh, vector based on its core? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand your question, to be honest. Uh, but also, we have an AI search um, session coming up in like a couple of days, so I would recommend like asking all these AI search questions in over there and trying to get the response that you're looking for from the professionals working on Azure AI search. Here we go. I'm back. Uh, thank you for all that. I think you managed to answer lots of questions. So now, as of today, you've seen a, you know, a couple different ways that you can build RAG, right? So we're, we're seeing how you can build a RAG connected to Azure AI search, which, can make, which makes sense if you're like, you have to chunk up these long documents uh, and if you're going across multiple sources. Now we've seen how you could retrieve from a Cosmos DB instead. So that makes sense, you know, like the inventory case or something where it's, where it's already a database and you can just add a vector field as an additional field, right? Um, so it, re it, it you know really depends on the use case. If anyone's still trying to figure out what is the right fit, uh, you know, please you know uh, post in that form or bring questions to tomorrow's session or that Wednesday session on on AI, AI search, uh, so that we can you know think through what makes sense for your different situations. Uh, but now you can see you've you've got multiple you've got multiple options you've got lots of options, and it's good to try out different things. Like a lot of this stuff is really new. Like a year ago, we didn't have this right. We didn't. I don't think we had vector support in the Azure databases yet, right? No, we didn't. Yeah, was, like in in a year, like everything changed. I feel like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now everybody wants to know about vector. So I actually gave a talk in San Francisco a few weeks about vector search, and you can look on my YouTube to to see that talk. And it was packed. Everybody wanted to to talk about vector search and vector databases. So 
Uh, so it's, it's, it's really good to, to learn about this stuff because it's really, really powerful, incredibly powerful. I'm just shocked when mm -hmm. I, when I do some vector searches, I'm like, how did it, how did it connect these two things together? Right. Cause you never know what's in the latent space of a model and open AI just actually announced, they announced two new embedding models. I don't know. Did you see that? Well, I was not sure. Wait, did they just announce a new model? Yeah, yeah. They said, um, so right now we've been using ADA002, which is a model that works with uh, text up to uh, 8,192 tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, and it produces uh, vectors that are, um, what is it, 1536 long? It's like you know, fairly long. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they just announced a new one. Is it eight to three maybe, which has 256 tokens, but apparently works like just as well. So that's amazing. Like if you can get the oh. same similarity, uh, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be cheaper even. I have to look into it. Like this is this is really new. This is Monday. So, um, so yeah. So all the I'm saying like this stuff. Is, there's new stuff all the time. Uh, we don't even have those models available on Azure yet. Well, we should have them soon. We like to fast follow. So for now, probably all of you are going to use ADA002. Uh, but keep in mind, like there's many, there's going to be, there's many embedding models already. There's going to be more in the future. So when you are, you know, doing computing embeddings, whether it's for Cosmos or for AI search, you want to look at the models and figure out, is this model going to work well for my, you know, my domain, my language, the kind of input I'm putting into it, you know, is it going to support that size? Uh, so that's one thing to think about as well. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating, you know, like literally everything changed a year ago. Like we didn't like talk about it. And now we have like ADA 003 and we're going to soon have ADA 004. It's going to be like even yeah. cheaper, more dimensions. So yeah, like we, the industry like is just going like, just going fast, like we are in the age of AI, I feel like. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, and in the age of, of uh, vector search, because we've vector had vectors search. for a long time. Like back in the day, I, I knew about word to vec that was like mm -hmm. the original um, vector embedding model, but we've only recently been able to encode really big things in vectors. So now we can take an entire row in the database and compute a vector for it, right? Mm -hmm. We can take an entire, you know, five paragraphs or even 10 paragraphs or whatever and compute a vector for it. So now we're able to do much more similarity than we could do before. And that really opens us up to being able to use vectors for way more. Uh, so I think that's really exciting. So, you know, regardless of what you use for the hackathon, I think it's really good for us to start thinking about like if we add if we add vectors to our databases, to our search engines, what does that open up for our products in the future? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, was there... We just had a yeah question uh, comments from Ken and yeah okay so ken saying both of the new embedding models support setting a reduced vector size huge reduction side with minimal hits the effectiveness so that's something where you'd want to like mm. you know run um you know run some some baseline uh evaluation to see how things are working is that something you do uh with cosmos db like because you're talking about using the indexes right a lot of times when you're using an index the first thing you want to do is like a comprehensive search to establish a baseline and mm -hmm. then check an index. Is that something that customers are doing right now with their setups? Yeah. So we basically like we also this is the like internal. We are internally like tested like IVF and like HNSW like or like millions and millions of data. And like we are not able to see like very big difference, but still like we will see like when HNSW it's like more memory constraint or it's just HNS like IVF works. It's, it doesn't use that much memory. So it really depends on the use case. Um, but you have done, like literally we have done so much internal testing on those two indexes. Um, we have like data for it all, all, also available online on our documentation if people want to read about it. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And what does the accuracy look like for your for your um, evaluations that you've done? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Let me yeah, let me pull up in the chat and let you know what the exact accuracy looked like. Um, but there were like a lot like we have done like it's 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 a, it's a lot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's something you can do is that you can do like, you know, a brute force search, like a comprehensive mm -hmm. search, just using, you know, not using an index and that's going to be really, really slow. So you don't want to do that in production um, for like a user facing thing, but you can do that, see what the results are, and then you can run it with your index mm -hmm. and then, and then compare and see, 
uh, you know, what it, making sure that it's getting the results you would expect. Getting the results, the right results and the accurate results. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, so thank you everyone for coming today. And once again, asking great questions, please do ask any more in the forum. And I hope to see you tomorrow for the next session, which is about customizing the RAG chat app that I deployed earlier today. And so that is where we can see how you can bring in your own data and I'll also point out like, you know, where you could connect to Cosmos DB if you do want to connect there. Uh, so do come and join us tomorrow. All right.